Hi, my name is Jacob Baykowski and I'm an application engineer here at Go Engineer. And today we are going to make a pillow using the freeform tool in SolidWorks. So here I have the sketch. I double click on the sketch, I can go in edit mode. And here I have it fully defined. I just uh just use the rectangle to kind of control the spline in here to get this pillow like shape. And then I used a planar surface to fill that in. Now you can use any face or surface that you'd like when using the freeform tool. That's why it's here on the surfaces tab of the command manager. It's also found if you click insert features freeform. This tool has been around since SolidWorks 2010. Um, but I'm going to show us here uh, little tips on how to use it. The first thing you must select when using the freeform tool is a face. and You can only manipulate one face at a time. I can manipulate the face on a solid or I can just use this surface here. So I'm going to click on this face I want to manipulate. And right away you'll notice that there's a mesh, a guide mesh here. Uh, right now this mesh is set to normal natural excuse me but if I select user defined it'll flag me and say you'll lose all modifications to the freeform that's fine I haven't made any changes and I'll view normal here so we can see that if I adjust this handle I can then change the angle that that mesh is previewed on there I'll switch back to a natural mesh and I can change the mesh density there at the bottom under this display group box. Um, you can slide the slider or just the increments here. And this just gives you better control over where you want to place curves and points that you're going to use to manipulate this face. I'm going to choose a mesh density of 5 in this case. Once I get my mesh density set, I like to use the direction 1 and direction 2 symmetry and you'll get these planes here that kind of show up and that way it's like this this mirror command if I add a curve by clicking add curves on one side you'll see a little green preview it'll do the exact opposite on the other one so that maintains symmetry about this part I'm going to add a curve over here on this side and I can um, use the tab key to switch directions or click the flip direction button. I'm also going to place one right here on this end. And let's place one more here at this guide and one will automatically be at the opposite end because of my symmetry. Once I've added curves to my model, I then need to add points. So I'm going to scroll down here to the control points box and click add points. A little pencil icon will appear and there will be some green preview dots where intersection of curves appear. I am going to create one here, click to create one at those intersections. And to give a little bit more control here, uh, I'm just going to click at the intersection here and you notice because that symmetry it creates one on the opposite side I'm gonna make one here and here as well so now that I have those points put on there all I have to do is simply select one and you'll see that the triad appears that's because I have triad follow selection checked and uh, you can notice that the, there's a different triad orientation uh, all I need to do is I can move, say this is the Y handle here, I can move the slider up to start pulling up or drag the handle. Um, and you'll see the triad orientation like I mentioned. Notice that it's the same as the global here. But if I switch, I can change to relative to the surface or relative to the curve. Um, I'm going to use the global and I'm going to click in the graphics area and just kind of point normal here and I'm going to use the control polygon to control this point and now it gives me a control polygon similar to the style spline or if you use display control polygon used in the spline tool in the 2D sketch you'll be familiar with this interface 
and it gives me a little bit better control over what this curve is going to look like. And I'm just trying to eyeball kind of a nice little pillow shape in here. And I'm going to do that for the other curves as well. Click on these points. Drag it up along the Y here. Again, I personally recommend the control polygon. I think it's pretty nice for getting a little bit more control. And you'll see, uh, so if I move one side, it moves the other because of that directional symmetry that I've put in there. And you'll notice that it, it moves the other side as well because of that symmetry. Now um, let's take a look at some of the other features here under display. Um, I can change the transparency of the face over here. I can also check the zebra stripes to look at the curvature, the face curvature on this, as well as curvature combs, which uh, are my personally I, I prefer the curvature combs because it allows me to see the upwards and downward inflection. I can change the scale of these and I can change the density make them thicker or with less bars uh, you can see where the inflection changes direction that's what I like about it another thing to notice as well and you know, I can change the direction as well uh, but I care about these curves the most right now another thing to take note of is this continuity um, a contact continuity just maintains a contact along the original boundary. Um, if I change it to, say, a tangent contact, um, that actually looks a lot better in this case. And what that does is, say I have an angle on the face next to it that's 10 degrees, it's going to maintain that 10 degrees throughout when it when the edge turns into the next face there. Um, same thing with curvature. Uh, curvature, if I have a certain, say I have the next, the face adjacent, there's an adjacent face here, uh, it will maintain the same, uh, the same face curvature, radius of curvature of that face, uh, to the next con conjoining face there. And movable and movable tangent. Uh, movable means that the original boundary you can move, but the tangency is not maintained. Versus movable tangent, you can keep the tangency there, but I'm able to, to manipulate a curve on this border here. So I like this. I like tangent or movable tangent. Um, for this, it kind of looks a lot better there. It kind of flows in a little bit better. And... If I look at my curvature combs in that direction, I think they look a little bit better as well. So now I need to complete this pillow, make it a solid body. So I'm going to go over to the Features tab, Mirror. I'm going to mirror about the top plane. I'm going to mirror this surface body here. And I'll see if I can knit it here. And uh, right now I still have two surface bodies. You'll see, I've, or a surface body here. It says there's a surface body in here. I have no solid bodies. And my section view also shows me that I have no thickness. So I'm going to go to the surfaces tab. Click on thicken. And you'll see, uh, since I have an enclosed region here, there's a new uh, checkbox for the thicken command called create solid from an enclosed volume. That's exactly what I'd like to do. The green check and now it is a solid body. You can see it has that thickness in there. And uh, now I'll apply a little bit of a linen, some beige cotton to the pillow. And there we go.
And there's a practical application for using the freeform tool to make a pillow. My name is Jacob Bakowski. Thank you for tuning in to this SolidWorks quick tip on freeform. Mm -hmm.